So another enormous topic that we've already touched on quite a lot today, but deserves much more exploration, is the topic of inequality. And shortly we'll have a discussion around that featuring Anne Legaby, Gautam Ban, and they'll be joined by the chairman of the economics department at Harvard, Edward Glazer, in a discussion moderated by Marcus Yanker, who's director for the Center for Sustainable Urban Futures here in Gothenburg. And they'll also be joined by Sir Michael Marmot, who directs the Center for Health Inequality, the Institute for Health Inequality at UCL in London. And before that discussion, Sir Michael Marmot is going to give a talk entitled Build Back Fairer. Over to you, Sir Michael. Thank you. With COP26, climate change and the environment are on the agenda. It's important, though, not to forget that inequality is also on the agenda. If we look within countries as well as between countries, what we see is the more deprived the area, the fewer the life chances for people. And among the biggest characteristics of living in a deprived community is worse health. Worse health is important because we all weigh all value health, but also because of the evidence on the social determinants of health. Worse health means not just lack of access to health care, but it means that a, a maldistribution of the social determinants of health. And when I think about health inequalities in cities, I think about the fire in Grenfell Tower in London, which was a local authority a building block initially, a fire in a high rise set of housing, killed 72 people. It was a huge calamity, disgrace. What's less known is that Grenfell is situated in the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea in London. The life expectancy gap between the poorest part of that borough and the richest part for men is 22 years. So yes, the conflagration that killed 72 people was an unnecessary tragedy, but so too is the gap of 22 years in life expectancy within the borough. That's been going on for a very long time. And that evidence suggests should be avoidable, which is why my institute is the Institute of Health Equity, not Health Equality, because we think that those systematic inequalities between groups that are potentially avoidable and are not avoidable are unfair, unjust. And I've authored four reports in the last 12 months with the title Build Back Fairer. And I mentioned the four because I think it's relevant to how we take action. One was for England in December 2020. In March 2021, we produced Build Back Fairer in the Eastern Mediterranean region of the World Health Organization. So that was for supranational domain. The third was Build Back Fairer in Greater Manchester, a city region. And the fourth was Build Back Fairer in Hong Kong. It's not a country, Hong Kong, it's a jurisdiction. But it means we want action at supranational level, at national level, at subnational level, and at city and regional level. And there's a great deal that can be done. In my English review following the WHO Commission on Social Determinants of Health, we had six domains of recommendations that which should be the basis for building back fairer. Give every child the best start in life. Number two, education and lifelong learning. Three, employment and working conditions. Four, everyone should have at least the minimum income necessary for a healthy life. Number five, healthy and sustainable places in which to live and work. And number six, taking a social determinants approach to prevention. 
The evidence shows that we can take action on those. It needs national action, supranational, but local action. Let me give you just one example. In Britain, the Minister of Finance, the Chancellor of the Exchequer, a month ago, took a decision on a Wednesday that by Thursday would put 300,000 more children into poverty. He removed £1,000 a year from so-called universal credit, the welfare system to the poorest. If he can increase the number of children in poverty by 300,000 between Wednesday and Thursday, between Thursday and Friday, he could reduce it by 500,000. So we do need national action, but we've been working with communities and there's a great deal that with co-production, engaging individuals and communities, engaging business, local government, integrated care systems, the voluntary and community sector that we can do to make a difference. And you know why we should do it? Because of social justice to make progress to health equity, to reduce the avoidable inequalities in health.